Thank you for joining the Primo Roadmap. We are uh, the panel of product, uh, the product team. I uh, would like to share with you the highlights of 2020. We will start first uh, introducing you the focus area, the area uh, that the roadmap will deal with. Uh, and each one of the slides is going to be under uh, a specific area. So the area for the 2020 is always is the search and exploring. Um, we also, uh, Christine will share with us the, uh, the progress and the, the project of the Central Discovery Index. More area that we are introducing is the open uh, system as part of we will share with you what are, uh, what are the things that we are doing as part of being open. Um, we also choose to have is the analytics because there are several um, major uh, upgrade platform of the analytics and ongoing uh, enhancement for the analytics that we would like to share with you. So we choose to put it here. Uh, and again, also of the focus area of the user experience, all of the features that are uh, improving the workflow and the users you, your user workflow in the discovery sites are going to be introduced under this section. We also choose to put accessibility as another uh, roadmap uh, area in order to share with you what do we plan in terms of accessibility this year. We also have the area of the library empowerment, what uh, more tools we are going to provide in order to let you more control uh, and uh, the flexibility to uh, to make the content available for the users on the right context or uh, what more tools do we pre uh, provide you and also um, um, in the area of the consortia we choose to also have these sections and uh, share with you what we planned here uh, we also would like to share that some of the slides that uh, you are going to see are going to be implemented in Primo VE only as part of taking advantage of the platforms. You will see more of those slides in the consortia area. So things that we know we can uh, uh, take more capability of the higher education platform, uh, we are going to introduce it as Primo VE. So those are the area that uh, the, the following presentation is going to be divided into. Um, and before we start to drill down into the uh, what are the key features of this uh, roadmap, I uh, would like also to share with you the links here to the release uh, schedule in Primo. It's a quarterly release schedule in Primo V uh, on top of the Alma. It's a monthly release. You can link here and better know the, the schedule. Uh, in the next slides, what we are going to share with you is the like the index, the table of context of this uh, presentation. You can see the activities that we are sharing with you the cross 2020. Those are the activities that we have. And in the next slides, you can see what activity and what features are going to be released in the first half uh, of 2020 and what are planned to be released in the second half of 2020. So the activity that we plan to have uh, across the year and is also an ongoing uh, activity is, of course, the rollout uh, of CDI and Christine will elaborate more on that later on. And, and, and then again, also with the CDI's uh, uh, improvement and, and the simplify activation with the CDI. As I mentioned, the uh, upgrade for the Primo Analytics is also something that we are going to share and see it coming uh, uh, along the year. We are starting with Primo V March release and, uh, uh, and, a and a gradual rollout and then later to the Primo customers. So we choose to have it as a cross 2020 activity. Accessibility for everyone. This is an ongoing effort to be comply with the standard. We will share the activity that is planned for 2020. And we also choose to have, uh, as the project is also, uh, we are putting as always applying more best practices to make your library collection visible and more and, explore, and, and exposed 
in uh, um, uh, to the other search engines such as Google. So this is also an ongoing, what is the effort that we are doing in that area? And as I mentioned, uh, these slides will reflect the, uh, the feature that we are planning to do in the first half of 2020. Uh, at least we are declaring the features that are going to be released first in, in the first half of 2020 uh, here. And uh, each one of them is going to be um, elaborated more in the next uh, slides. And this is for the second half. So this, this is like a summary uh, of what is going on. And now uh, we are going to be focused uh, on the Central Discovery Index, uh, the CDI, and I will let Christine to, take, to, to talk more about here. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, we already shared a lot of information about the new Discovery Index, so I'm just making the assumption that most of you know what this is about. Just very briefly, we created a new Discovery Index to replace Primo Central and also to replace the Summon Central Index. So both systems, Summon and Primo, are going to use the new um, Discovery Index. So this project is um, almost done in the sense that we created the index, we um, populated it with the, the content, um, we recreated a lot of the functionality that we already had on Primo Central and also on Summon, because obviously there were uh, um, functions that we created on Primo Central in the past and that we wanted to also have in the um, Central Discovery Index. So the development work on this is almost done. There are a few th new things that we still need to do. Um, we're going to start with the rollout of the Central Discovery Index this Sunday, the rollout schedule is published on the uh, Customer Knowledge Center. So you find the schedule there. You also find um, the different phases there. We also published a lot of documentation there and FAQ, um, how the single activation is going to work from Alma, etc. So I would really encourage you to have a look at the uh, Knowledge Center. Um, there are a lot of documents that um, explain all the different areas in a little bit more detail. Um, we are also going to publish a few more documents um, for the rollout on Sunday. One is um, the list of collections that are in, um, in CDI and also the, uh, the mappings between the Primo Sankle collections and the collections you are going to see in the Alma Community Zone when your Alma environment is enabled with CDI. So the highlights for CDI is a single activation, obviously, from Alma and later on also from SFX to Primo. Uh, to to for, for Primo customers to uh, to CDI, um, the update cycles are much faster than with Primo Central. With Primo Central, you have to wait up to a week before activations come into effect. That's full text and search activations in CDI. It's going to happen within 48 hours, between 24 and 48 hours. We're going to have a few more granular resource types in CDI. We on purpose did not make a lot of changes here, but we did make some of the changes that were requested by customers. We also worked with the content working groups to get some consultancy on what we should introduce. And um, so you find again a, an article on the on the customer knowledge center under under the CDI section, which explains the the resource types and possibly um, also, also possibly changes that you have to make if you make changes to resource types locally. Um, we're going to move to the merged record. If you remember from Primo Central, there are grouped records. So if you have um, duplicates from different platforms, the same item, then we're grouping it in Primo Central. In um, CDI, we are merging it. And again, the merge process is also described in an article on the Customer Knowledge Center. Um, we separate the, the audiovisual facet. That was again something that was requested by um, a lot of you in the past. So we're going to have a different facet for the audio and the, um, the, the video content. And obviously also CDI has more content than, um, than P, uh, the Primo Central. Um, we basically combined what we had in the Summon Index and what we had in Primo Central and put it all into the Central Discovery Index. So you're also going to have more content here. Um, and again, please do go to the, the Customer Knowledge Center because we put a lot of work into the documentation there. Um, it's, it describes the rollout. It describes how the single activation works. Um, we have an FAQ there um, and a lot of more information also um, in, in terms of what your patterns are going to see once you're moving to CDI. Okay, search and exploring is also mine, right, Nilly? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so um, search and exploring is, is very much related to CDI because with CDI, we're also moving to a new search engine. We're moving to Solar. Um, it's not too different, I think. Um, we 
try to do on, on purpose, we try to adjust it as much as we could um, to not cause too much disruptions to your users. And I think that worked quite well. We are going to introduce in ongoing improvements. That's the same always for search and ranking. Search and ranking is nothing about big features. It's more about um, improving things, adjusting things also with more content in the index. Obviously, um, things change if you add more content to the index. So we need to constantly adjust the process and also see that we are supporting the, um, the topic search searches, um, the short topic search, long topic searches, and the known item searches appropriately. So that's that's really all about um, search and ranking. Um, exploration, um, we started last year to add relationships via a graph database to the, to the discovery um, experience. Um, that is that we um, connected books and book review and we started to connect books and book chapters. There is, of course, um, a lot of more data that we still need to connect. We started doing this with, um, I think, um, quite a lot of data, but obviously there is still um, work to be done. So we put this a little bit on hold while we were developing CDI, but we're going to get back to this this year. So we are going to expand the expecting relation, existing relationships and that means that we're connecting more material in the index and then we're also adding new relationships for example articles to research data we are indexing a lot of research data um, in cdi and also in, in primo central actually um, and we're going to connect this to the articles and extend this to other relationships um, in the future so that's these are the, the plans this year thank you christine now we switch over to another roadmap area, which is the user experience. I will share with you what is planned in that area. So coming from the NERS, from the community, is a request to improve the way the sticky facets behave today, make it more visible and allow uh, the user uh, an easy way uh, to use their preferred filters and to remember their filters across the session. So I just want to share with you how this is planned to be. So we are going to introduce a new uh, remember all filters button when you have an active filters and once you click on that you will be able to have uh, all of those active filters, uh, the current active filters locked. So uh, the next search you are going to have are going to also be with those uh, locked filters with those sticky faster. By doing that, we're actually improving the visibility of these features and allow the user more way, uh, easy way to reuse the, the filters across the session. Another thing that we plan to do is when you click on the reset filter, it's going also to uh, unlock and uh, to remove the, to re the, the sticky facet. It's not as it worked today, so we are going to have the reset filter, filter and also the library search button or also a new, what we think um, should be targeted as new search uh, button also uh, clearing the search and clearing uh, clearing the um, the sticky facet as uh, clearing the search so this is in the area of the sticky facet i just want to mention that each slide also uh, have this release plan when you can see where do we uh, target that to so improve the sticky facet the nurse announcement is planned for the first half of uh, 2020. Okay, another thing that we have already managed to release both for Primo both and Primo V is the improvement that we did for mobile device and we already got good feedbacks from uh, uh, the customer that uh, experience and, 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 and test that. So what we did, what we are doing this mobile device uh, improvement is uh, uh, we are actually uh, allowing the user to um, better navigate in mobile from record to record in the full display we are also improve the way the uh, uh, user can activate and trigger the, the filters results by displaying the icon and uh, uh, avoiding confusion that uh, uh, based on usability testing, we saw that uh, uh, we're confused with the advanced search. We also allow the user more easily to apply uh, 
to trigger one of the send to action, one of the export to action by showing them all and not uh, uh, without a need to uh, navigate and using an arrows. So uh, we really improved, uh, we provide a better mobile user experience uh, with this uh, NERS enhancement that was recently released. Um, more things uh, to make to improve the workflow is we would like to provide a uh, a uh, quick access to digital assets, so uh, to save user clicks uh, and letting them go into a digital viewer uh, with additional click. We are actually uh, embedding the Alma digital viewer within the Primo full display. Uh, so with the quick access service, you will be able, Patron will be able to see the uh, videos, also player for audios, uh, PDF files, uh, viewers uh, within the full display uh, and the images. Uh, what we also suggest them is also a, a way to do a download. This capability, uh, this capability is available because we are also, because the Alma Digital team is releasing an improved Alma Digital uh, viewer. Uh, and this is uh, planned for the first half of uh, 2020. Next is inertia enhancement uh, that we are working with the Alma team uh, with regarding to enhanced purchase request uh, form. So what we are um, what we are planning in this area is to uh, help the user uh, better specify this purchase request by uh, adding more fields such as preferred material type and also adding and it help the user and indicate them if uh, if library already holds uh, the material before they are submitting a purchase request and I will use this a mock-up to share with you so we are planning to add to the blank purchase request form uh, additional uh, field to let the user specify what material type, whether it's electronic or physical, and choose accordingly. And uh, in addition, another capability is if they are uh, typing an uh, identifier, we will, uh, the system automatically try to search if the uh, identifier uh, such as ISBN is already exists, if we have a holding for that. If we have holding, we will indicate it with a message to the user uh, to let them know before he submits a purchase request uh, and indicate that he can search for the material uh, instead of submitting the purchase request. So this is an uh, enhancement for the purchase request form. More NERS enhancement that's coming from you is the ability to add additional uh, action. To, uh, we do uh, additional action, so we have the send to action, the, all of the export to citation manager. With this enhancement, actually, uh, the request is to have the ability to select a, a bulk of records from the brief result and export them to an Excel file. With this capability, we will actually export, we will uh, expose in the, uh, um, in the Excel file some uh, main metadata elements, such titles, some uh, uh, identifier to help the user uh, and the date to help the user use it in Excel or sort, uh, and all of the things that you can do with Excel files. So more uh, sent to actions from, uh, uh, from the, your discovery. Enhanced personalization, these slides is something that we uh, we are taking uh, uh, from the last year roadmap and put it also in the 2020. To, and this uh, enhanced personalization include uh, the following, um, the request that's coming from the community uh, for quite long uh, is the ability to set the default number of results per, per page. So we do plan to do it and personalize it for the current session. Um, this is um, something that we wanted to do and performance per, from performance consideration, we avoided it so far. Uh, so we put it on the roadmap for 2020 to be able to provide it to you and deliver it for you. 
The other item that we, we want to, to share with you that we are planning in the area of personalization is the ability to have the custom scope. So user can uh, set and um, set his search, set, uh, define his search setting. For instance, uh, in the case that we have a, a lot of library, a lot of scopes defined in the search area, uh, you will be able to add, uh, to let the user cast, assign the user to custom their search scope. And once they are selecting in the, the first time, they can uh, change and uh, choose to have what library they are using the most. And this custom scope we can be saved for later on searching with an indication that the search is being limited to those kind of uh, search. So this is something that we also put on the roadmap and planning to provide you. Enhanced glanceability is the uh, continued effort that we did also in 2019 help the user more easily to find relevant material or relevant resources that uh, by indicating uh, uh, and adding uh, icons we did it last year with the open access and also with the peer-reviewed and with exposing course material within the brief result. We are continuing the effort into 2020 by adding a indication whether a, an article is the original research article. So we will label a original article as a, opposed to a review and analysis article with the, ta with the uh, indication that this is an original, considering also uh, uh, to add the length of the article as an additional indication to help the user understand that this is the best resource for his current search by adding this indication. So this is one aspect. Another aspect that we would like to share and add uh, to the data and help the user better identify the resources that if users, uh, uh, if the material is considered to be an open educational resource material, uh, the OER, open education resource material refers to uh, teaching and learning materials that can assist uh, researchers uh, and, and also have uh, and, and can be uh, freely accessed under a certain licensing. So we, if, if we recognize that record is considered to be OER, we will put an indication for the user to understand that uh, this could be also a, a best uh, resource or valuable resources for their search, for the current search. Next, uh, we let you, uh, Israel, uh, elaborate more about extent physical availability status. Hi, thanks, Millie. Um, yeah, so this is an example of of a, of a feature that uh, will be happening in Primo V because we can actually take advantage of the information available to us directly in in Alma. And the idea here is to um, to go beyond the current um, available, not available check holding statuses that we have um, in Primo today. Um, we know that a lot of sites have customized the not available to, to something else, but um, we know the exact indication at the item level, but we want to also at the um, brief level status to be able to say a bit more, for example, uh, differentiate between not available because um, all the records are checked out or not available because um, the only item is lost or not available because it's uh, being purchased and, and it's on its way. But really give more information there to the user earlier on um, in the stage. Okay. Back to you. Um, Christina, we'll let you take the improved full text linking. Um, sure. Um, so this is part of a bigger project that we are currently conducting. Um, it's about um, improving convenience or convenient access to full material or to, to the material in general. Um, when we're talking about full text, it's mostly about electronic full text, of course, but the entire project is more than just the, the full text or just electronic full text. It's about having a better indication for the user on the discovery system of how something is available and if it's available, um, as well as providing convenient access. And as first part of this, um, we're looking at adding direct links to PDF. 
for open access material. This is something that we introduced in Summon already last year, but we're also going to do add this to Primo now. Um, we're getting this information from Unpaywall. So we're going to add for all the items that are have um, that have direct links for PDFs, we're going to add this to the UI so the user can choose to use that link and, and go to um, go to the open access material directly. It's really about convenience and convenient access to, to full text. But again, we're planning to extend this. It's not just about electronic, it's also about um, other material, maybe resource sharing or um, you know any other business models that may come up with publishers or may come up in the next years. Um, we're talking to publishers, we're talking also to, to librarians and, and just see what changes are coming and um, you know what changes are you experiencing, what changes are the publishers experiencing that um, impact um, how we want to get access on the discovery system. So as a, again, we're starting with the direct links to the PDFs for open access material. That's something that we already know and that we already have. Um, we're also doing some analysis for, for paywall material and see if we're also adding direct links to PDFs for paywall material. That's um, a little bit um, a, a longer um, a, a longer project. I think um, I'm not entirely sure if we can um, add this this year, but this year we are starting with the open access material. And next is uh, the utilized mobile device capability is something that we also started last year and we are continuing the effort this year. So uh, last year or, um, we released the voice assistant as a, a modern capability to help you um, to help you search by voice uh, in your discovery as currently how we're um, a uh, user may use and also uh, tend to use in other sites. So we are continue the effort of providing more mobile tools uh, and also optimize the, the workflow from the mobile into the discovery system. What we are planning specifically uh, in 2020 is the ability to add a QR code for each for each permalink of the system, so you can use it as a, as a way to promote a materials and let users scan a QR code and understand what we, this code is about a specific material and a set of uh, records. And user can also share with each other uh, with each other a QR code for a specific uh, um, record of a, or a search result. So this is one aspect that we would like to share and use the mobile uh, QR um, in the system. And another aspect is to utilize the camera. So uh, you, we can use the camera as, a, as to capture a phrase or a text and translate it and generate it uh, into a search using the OCR. So this is one another aspect that a search can be triggered with a snapshot of a, a, a camera of a, 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 with, a, a with a snapshot of a, of a picture of a, a each material type. So more modern a capability or more mobile device capability on your discovery system is something that we are planning on the second half. Enhanced collection discovery is also something that we are putting on the roadmap uh, to allow more way to uh, expose and search and easy navigate with your collection, with your special uh, collection. So last year we provided the sort option and we saw the feedback coming in the idea uh, requesting to provide more sort options, uh, specifically more sort, sort options on the uh, items, on the collection titles, on the item themselves. So we are going to add those. And we are also going to add the capability to let you define per collection what will be the, um, the favorite sort options. For instance, if you have a collection of new titles or new new books, you, you will be able to set for this collection uh, uh, the default sort to be by date. So this is one. Uh, cha one change enhancement that we are doing. Another enhancement is uh, we also offer the way to search within the collection page. And when we uh, release that, we offer it to search only uh, on the items that are 
specifically under this current collection page. Now, uh, when we release it, we saw requests coming from the customer and we, that we would like to get more uh, hierarchy search. So in order to allow them and allow the user to expand the search to items that are also under the sub collection underneath, we are going to let the user suggest the user to expand the search uh, to the to to more results below. So this is something that we are also uh, planning to have. Now we are switching into the area of the library empowerment, uh, which is more tool that allow you to to play and and uh, empower the and provide user so, uh, your, your resources on the right contents based on the tools that we are providing. So the single activation with CDI is something that Christine already mentioned. Um, so okay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I already talked about this, and um, again, we have documentation on the um, on on the customer knowledge center. I actually saw that someone asked in the QA about where the documentation is. It's if you go to Primo and you go into the content corner, you find CDI there, and under that documentation training, um, and we put all the documentation there, including the documentation for the uh, for the collection activation, the single activation. Um, so what's happening here on, on a high level is you're going to uh, activate all the collections from Alma and SFX and not anymore in a separate interface. So that should actually simplify the whole process um, and makes it um, just just yeah, just just makes it much simpler. Um, I should also add that um, we have more automated processes here in CDI. So for example, everything that you activate in Alma and SFX for full text will automatically be searchable. Um, you have the power here to suppress it. So if there's something that you have active, for example, you have an open access collection active, you don't want to have this in discovery, but you have it active for your link resolver, you can suppress that if you want. So that function is still available, but the assumption is that every full text um, collection that you activate is something you would like to have discoverable and it will automatically be discoverable. Um, that's also an advantage in uh, relation to the alternative coverage. At the moment, if you have a collection that you have full text for and that's not indexed in Primo Central from the original provider, um, let's say the EBSCO collections, for example, um, then you have to activate alternative coverage collections, which are we are publishing a list for that. In CDI, this is different because it will take the metadata from the entire index and look what you have full text for and automatically make it searchable. So there's no need anymore for alternative coverage. You have your full text collections active and CDI or the process will automatically look in CDI what metadata is available to um, to cover that that full text um, so that will automatically become available. I already talked about the faster update cycle. It takes up to 48 hours instead of a week. Um, so that's much faster, obviously. And um, yeah, there's a lot of documentation and I'd really be interested in your feedback as well. If you have anything about CDI, any questions about CDI or any feedback about CDI, we have that email address CDI underscore info at xlibrisgroup.com, um, which I can't unfortunately show on the screen here, but I uh, please do send us your questions. We need your questions also to improve the documentations. Um, sometimes you have questions that we didn't even think of um, and, and it makes sense to, to then also um, publish the answers in the FAQ. So that's all about CDI here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next uh, slide is about configuring the Fairbird preferred record, another nurse enhancement um, where we are um, offering more control to define the preferred Fairbird group that is going to be displayed. So uh, letting you um, prefer newer records by setting the date as uh, uh, more prioritized when pre when choosing the preferred record. This is something that we are adding to Primo. And in Primo V, we are actually uh, are going to have the entire configuration uh, uh, of providing the control based on the either date or a resource type or more uh, configuration option to let you uh, better uh, to let you the control of to choose which is the preferred fiber record, what would be the logic to select those, the, the preferred one. Okay. Next, another nurse enhancement is to optimize the workflow 
uh, of the pipe and make it more opt automate. Currently, the delete and reload pipe in Primo, uh, uh, delete and reload pipe in Primo uh, was used uh, in order to make it schedule and automate a, a manual, inter manual interruption was needed in order to set the harvest time uh, set the harvest date all over again to the initial one. With uh, this enhancement and with this uh, uh, feature, we are also we are adding an option to make to use the start harvest date at the sticky one, so you can always uh, you can schedule a delete and reload pipe and uh, have more automation of your data reload available. Another uh, optimization I will let you in Israel take, which is referring more to the Primo VE. Sure. Um, we have a few enhancements uh, in regards to the external data load um, for Primo V. Um, specifically, the two that we were highlighting here is uh, one, the ability to um, delete and reload, so similar to what Nili mentioned before about Remo, um, to re delete and reload um, a whole source from uh, um, from Primo V again to go out to the source, delete everything, and and bring um, and bring a new load in. Um, what we need to to do here is to make sure that the permalinks uh, will remain. Um, the way that permalinks work in in Primo V is they're based on um, an identifier, an MMS identifier, um, and when you delete and reload, you will get a new um, identifier. So what we need to do is allow this um, new flow and make sure that if if anyone kept um, a permalink of the old record, um, that this refresh won't um, um, won't break his permalink. Um, the other thing that we're planning to do is to allow a recalculate um, a data source, so reapply normalization rules and recalculate it without needing to go out to the source system and um, bring all those records uh, back in again, but rather recalculate on the records that are already um, held in the system. Next. Um, okay, um, I'll take this one as well. Um, so what we're looking at now here uh, for Primo V as well is building on the functionality that recently started coming out in Alma, the support uh, for a mods uh, schema. Um, what we will want to do in Primo V is first support um, mods records that are managed in Alma. So um, similar to Mark or Dublin core records that are managed in Alma, um, they should come through to Primo V um, automatically without any need to uh, set anything up or, or you know load or index uh, the data. Um, and the other thing is um, also make adjustments to allow loading um, external mods format um, as external data source into Primo V. As as well. Um, today, again, we've got quite a few sites that have already loaded uh, mod format um, into Primo or Primo V, um, but they do this today uh, by defining this as a generic XML where they need to then go and map the different elements um, into um, the Primo elements to be displayed and, and indexed. Um, what we'll do here is um, inherently um, support loading in um, mods format um, directly, again, either managed in Alma or um, as external resources. Um, a few a few other things that uh, that came up, and this is based on on feedback from customers, and this is additional functionality based on uh, different metadata elements um, that exist um, in the source records in the bib records. Um, the first one is allowing uh, open access indication and facets for um, for records. Um, again, today, um, out of the box, coming from Primo Central or CVI, we have indication that um, records are open access and they are filtered by the open access uh, facet. Um, today in Primo V we allow um, indication of open access for locally managed records, again whether they're ALMA records or uh, whether they're um, external records, but resources managed by you so we can indicate that they are open access. Um, what we need to add is the ability to also hook them up to the facet, so make them also, um, when you limit by the open access facet, it will limit these uh, locally managed resources um, as well. Um, another request that came from quite a few sites was the ability to, to use um, multiple conditions over multiple 
uh, fields um, to define custom resource types. Today, you can define a custom resource type very easily based on a field, on a fixed field, and the existence of a fixed or a value in a field. Um, and you can also define it using a regular expression. So a specific character or, or string within a field, um, you can use that as well. Um, what we need to add is basically a combination to say we want um, a specific character in for example, the leader um, field, and also a specific character or characters in a 008 field. So a combination of um, multiple fields and conditions um, in order to define a, a custom resource type. Okay. Next. Next, in the area of the accessibility, we'd like to share with you what is the effort that we are doing. So, um, Besides of that, with every new feature that we have in accessibility by design, and this can be seen in few examples in the product, whenever you release a new feature, uh, there should be, uh, the, it's being released and tested with accessibility. Uh, you can see it with the next and previous for keyboard navigation, we have a hidden close button and, um, and we are testing ARIA labels and releasing our, and all of the aspect of accessibility by design with every new feature. So this is an ongoing feature while we are keeping developing the product. This is one aspect to share and to, to put on the slide and share with you. Another thing that we are planning to do with, uh, in 2020 is to have an external accessibility uh, and to end an audit uh, um, in where it's going to be in uh, two phases. We are going to go into an external audit where we are going to get gaps uh, or and reported issues and to going into a cycle of fixing them and then an additional uh, verification where we also at the end of that are going to uh, provide you the, with um, uh, the update VPAT that is also should be uh, complied to the standard of the uh, 2.1. So this is the effort that we are doing in the 2020 in terms of the accessibility as an ongoing and also uh, with uh, complying to the new 2.2.1 standard. Uh, to share with you. Another area that we would like to share in the analytics is already announced. We are going into a phase of upgrading the analytics uh, uh, platform, switching from OBI 11 into OBI 12, uh, including with that addition, the ability to use data visualization first uh, in the first phases is in preview mode, so more way to see and the usage and play around with um, a more modern uh, graph. Uh, information for that exists and already published by the ALMA team uh, um, about what is the meaning of the upgrade and also uh, more material of what is going to be enhanced with the data visualization. Um, this, the, the rollout of, for that is going to be started with the Primo V customer as on top of the Alma platform are going to start with March release and gradual rollout for moving to the OBI 12. And for Primo customer is going to be uh, happened in the, um, during June or July, we are going to release a plan, a schedule plan for that uh, uh, very soon. Um, what you need to realize is uh, during the migration phase of um, moving your reports from OBI 11 to OBI 12, we are going to announce on a phase of a freeze uh, where it's recommended not to create a new report and we are going to copy your reports into OBI 12. And after this freeze ends, you are going to switch to work to do OBI 12 and also add the reports and more information and keep on going from on, on that uh, uh, platform. This is one aspect that we would like to share on the analytics. Another thing that we would like to share on the analytics area is the um, uh, we are going with every feature and more, every action that we are adding, we are uh, uh, adding um, usage information for those new actions. So this is an ongoing analytic to help you better uh, decide and evaluate uh, uh, based on the user traffic, how to tune or configure your discovery site. So this is one. 
aspect. Uh, another thing that uh, we are planning to do and already uh, released uh, recently is to help you get more information about uh, which are the most uh, popular citation styles and help you better prioritize and order the citation styles based on the user. So this is one thing that we are planning to do. Another thing we're planning to do is to provide more usage information about the recommended resources. And uh, in addition uh, to that, we also um, would like to enhance the way that uh, uh, the, you share, you can share your analytics reports with more people in your organization. We would like to do that uh, and automate it and support a, a situation when you need to provide and supply data to another a department in your institution uh, and it's currently not available for you on whale so we are going to allow the ability to send it to the ftp to ftp server so you can uh, let other in your institution download it from them and this with regarding to the analytics another in the area of the open system that what we are planning to add is the following we are going we, we are going to have the ability more option to expand search and allow more content coming to your primo with the same user interface more content from external search indexes can be provided uh, uh, into uh, primo by uh, exposing uh, the ability to have webhook api uh, where others can other or you can choose to have uh, to develop a layer you can choose to develop if you have an external search engine that you want to embed content into your discovery system you can choose to develop a layer that know how to search for this material and uh, um, transform the results into response that primo know how to to read and have a webhook for that and configure that in a webhook. You configure an API and we are calling that. So this is uh, expanding the ability to get more uh, data from others into, uh, uh, into your discovery. Uh, another thing that we are doing in the area of helping uh, the exposure to the to the library co collection to Google, for instance, is uh, uh, the following. We are first, um, um, first we are um, having um, dynamic rendering. Dynamic rendering is actually the ability to have Angular page to help Google crawlers uh, deploy, to help Google crawler deploy uh, read more uh, easily angular pages by giving them an html that is already processed with no uh, heavy javascript code over there so um we are offering uh, the dynamic google re released the dynamic rendering capability and we are now uh, deploying that capability into the in the cloud for primo v customer it's already available for primo customer we have a gradual rollout for deploying this capability so this is one aspect once you choose uh, the other, the second bullet about the access to Google Search Console, so we are going, if you choose to uh, publish your collection via the sitemap, for instance, you will be able to monitor the track and the coverage using Google Search Console for under certain conditions, uh, um, depend on your DNS, you will be able to uh, to use, uh, to have a configuration, to an, an authenticate a configuration and uh, uh, configure, add a configuration to let you access the Google Search Console. So this is another thing that we are doing. As in an ongoing task, we are also uh, checking for more best practices to apply and to enhance more meta tags uh, on the the pages and, and also enrich the structured data um, like schema.org enhancing that and the link data in order to be more search engine friendly in order to develop the concept of having library graph just to illustrate i want to uh, let you understand so your page can be scored by google tools uh, whether 
those pages are uh, can be crawled and what is going to be the score for these pages based on the data ele elements and meta tags that they are going to have. So uh, we applied some of those and we are also planning to enhance uh, with more meta tags uh, and those are the scores that can Google can uh, provide when um, uh, attempt to access uh, the Primo full display, for instance. Okay, the area of consortia, I will let you, uh, Israel, take. Sure, thanks. Um, so again, most of this area is also um, mainly around um, Primo V, um, again, just because of um, the way it works and the information that we can get um, directly from um, from Alma. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is the view it at other institutions. Um, today, when a user finds the record, um, obviously he gets his own institutions um, view it and get it. Depends on, on what uh, what resource his institution owns. Um, what we've got requests from a few institutions. Um, mainly, these are consortia where um, they're in a small regional area where a user can actually um, get up and go to um, another institution. So we already have had for a long time the get it at other institutions where I can actually see that physically a record um, exists and has holdings in another institution. And then perhaps I can place a resource sharing a request or something like that. Um, what we're announcing here is the ability to see that um, this record actually has a, a view at an electronic service um, in another institution. Um, so what, what we're going to allow here is to say, okay, I can see that my institution has or doesn't have any services, and I can actually see that this, um, uh, this resource um, exists in another institution, and um, here's the, um, um, the summary of holdings or the, what they're actually um, allowed to, to, or what they subscribe to. Um, what it will not allow, it will not allow the user to click here because, again, the user is going to click here, but he's going to get to a dead end because he's belonging to his own institution and is within his institution IP and, and so on. Um, in order to actually, so this is informative for him to then go and uh, cross the road and go to the other institution um, or, again, contact a friend who's there um, to get it for him. Uh, so again, this will be configurable. Um, sites that the uh, consortia that it is relevant for them uh, will be able to activate it um, or disable this. So that is the view from other institution. Um, the next is um, institutions in the library card. Um, in cases of uh, of patrons that are uh, linked patrons, so they will be able to see again today. They can see their um, requests, loans, fines, and fees, and so on from their own institution, and they are able to see this from um, other institutions where they are active in. Um, the way it works today in the library card is that uh, a user, a patron, that might be a linked patron in multiple institutions, he might have a long list of institutions that he um, has in the past had interactions with, um, but not necessarily um, active today. So he may have uh, requested or loaned a book there uh, six months ago, but he doesn't have anything um, related to them. But again, from the Alma perspective, he is a linked user in all of these um, institutions. So what we're planning to add is to add uh, some kind of indication, um, a badge of sorts, um, on the institutions that he has activity in. So he, if he goes into his library card and he sees um, his activity from within his own institution and he sees a list of another 10 institutions, he'll be able to identify very easily which of these institutions he actually has any activity in, again, whether a loan, request, fine or fee, and go in there and get that information as opposed to today where he doesn't really know um, unless he remembers which um, institutions out of the list he actually has um, any activity in. This is the library card. Um, this one is more about um, consortium management. So again, uh, relating to the empowering the, the library perspective, but again, for consortia. Um, today, um, in Alma and, and Primo V, there's a few functionalities that you can set up in once at the network, at the central level, and then 
um, and then push out and, and let the other institutions inherit from. So it works today with some mapping tables, with, uh, with labels, um, and we want to allow additional um, central management here as well. Um, so uh, we're looking at uh, defining custom resource types, where again today you have to do it multiple times um, to be able to do this once centrally and inherit it. Um, adding local fields, uh, we're relevant if this is a local field that the whole consortia um, wants to display or, or index, um, as well as uh, perhaps some view elements uh, where they want to have um, in some elements that go across the whole uh, consortia. So again, make it simpler to, to manage as opposed to having to redo things for all the different uh, separate institutions. Um, the last one is not exactly a consortia per se, but another flavor within a single institution. So within a single institution, um, there is functionality for a distributed uh, um, access of, uh, of resources. So if there's a difference between, um, you know, the, the North Campus and the South Campus and, and the Law Library, they subscribe to, um, to different materials. So today they can each have a view and they will each see their own uh, Primo Central or uh, or CDI um, record, so this already exists today. Um, what we want to allow is additional um, information and granularity that you can do and separate between the groups. So we're looking at uh, configuring the resource recommender. Today, the resource recommender is configured once at institution level. So if someone looks for uh, art and sets it up to um, to um, recommend a, a, a librarian or a staff member that can help them, um, it's done once and all the institution can see it. So we're looking at bringing this down um, to a more granular level, um, again, whether it's it's going to be a, a campus or perhaps a library level. We're still um, working on the design, but again, to allow this to be um, more granularity and the different views can see different um, different recommendations. Um, Another thing that, that we want to add is similar to what we discussed before about the view it in the other institutions, uh, we also want to do uh, and allow view it um, at the other campuses. Today, again, the way that the ALMA uh, resolver works is that it will give um, a user the services that he's allowed to based on um, on his group, on his uh, campus. So whether he's physically sitting in the IP of, of Campus A or is using the view of Campus A, he's going to get the services of, of Campus A. Um, similarly, again, if it's in within a small uh, regional area, it's sometimes relevant to know, okay, it's not relevant, uh, it's not available to me, but if I was in the law library or if I know a friend of mine in the law library, it's actually available over there. So similar to what we displayed before, but within groups of an institution, we'll be able to say, okay, here's what's available to you, and here is uh, potentially what's available in another campus or another um, area of the university according to their subscriptions. And again, this will be um, a configuration that people can um, turn on or off depending on um, how they, are, they want their patrons to see this. Thank you for joining uh, the session. As you can see, this session is combined with uh, many of your enhancements and ideas. There are things that we choose to highlight here, but there are also more to come coming from your ideas, so keep, keep um, voting and raising your feedback and comments. Uh, thank you.